Hello and welcome to an all new episode of the Transfix Take podcast where we are performance driven. It's the week of November 29th, and we are bringing you news, insights, and trends for shippers and carriers from our market expert, Justin Mays. Mays, great to be back with you. How's it going? Hey, Jenny. It's great to be back with you as well this week, and I hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving holiday. I sure did. There was lots of arroz con grandules, which is my favorite thing to eat in the world. How was your Thanksgiving, Mays? Well, Jenny, I had a great holiday. I actually took to the road, drove from Atlanta up to New Jersey. Both the hours of service laws that drivers have to follow going straight through. But overall, I had a great holiday. And I'm glad to be back with you today to talk about what we experienced in the freight markets over the past week and what we're looking out for in the coming weeks and where the market's going to fall for carriers. That's right, man. So we are deep in the holiday crunch right now. Uh, Thanksgiving really did kick us off, and now we're moving forward into the uh, Christmas time, New Year's, and, of course, uh, Lunar New Year which is going to bring us, uh, hopefully, a lot of opportunities for carriers. Now, last week, we ended the show on quite a bit of optimism, Naze. Where do you stand today? That's right, Jenny. I was a little more optimistic than I've been the last several months because, A, we knew that rates were going to see some pressure, and they did. We saw rates increase up to $1.62 on average, rate per mile, line haul only. And at the same time, Jenny, fuel continues to decline. Now, we are on several weeks where fuel has been declining. So carriers have been able to push up rates while taking advantage of fuel declines. And it's not just carriers that experience some relief from fuel declines, so do shippers. Let's get into the consumer sentiment and consumer spending. I polled on my LinkedIn last week, will customers flock to sales for Black Friday this year? 70% said yes, 30% said no. What are you seeing, Maze? Because I'm already seeing that these numbers are good, but they're still weak. Well, Jenny, I hope you got a lot of your shopping done and got to take advantage of the deals that are out there. I did on Thanksgiving, you know, went ahead and started shopping a little bit earlier. But overall, I don't think the demand that Black Friday and Cyber Monday brings to retailers will make too much of a difference in the truckload market. There's still just too much capacity out there. Over the past week, carriers were able to put pressure on the spot market as we experience the average rate increase in every region. And Jenny, most notably, I would point us to the Southeast and South, where we actually saw a greater pressure on rates, which resulted into greater increases in states like Florida and Texas and Georgia. Now, this is something I did not anticipate, and it actually even spilled over to the coastal region, to the Carolinas. And why was that, Maze? Well, Jenny, I didn't expect this to happen because usually these are the regions that are the loosest and have the most excess capacity even during the holidays in the winter. So obviously this is not a typical holiday season where we would have very tight capacity, people will go offline, etc. Mays, I'm curious to know where do you see the next two weeks going in terms of the spot rates and available capacity? Well, Jenny, over the next two and a half weeks, I think we're going to see a reversal of this. Rates are going to start declining as early as this week. We may continue to see some pressure as we move past the end of month push, but certainly the first two and a half weeks of December, we're gonna see rates decline, not necessarily go back to being lower than they were prior to Thanksgiving, but certainly not at a dollar and 62 cents as an average national rate. Because Jenny, that is the highest we've seen the average rate since mid-September. So again, that highlights the pressure that carriers were able to put on the overall spot market over the past week and a half but it's not going to continue. Yeah, unfortunately, this is not the best holiday season that we've seen for carriers in quite some time. Probably one of the worst, um, you know, because there's so much available capacity out there. It just means that rates, the rate spread becomes lower and lower for them. So we haven't seen those rates jump up to $2 where we would normally see Um, probably to 2019 levels or rates or even in the middle of the pandemic when, you know, people were ordering at their height, um, especially for online orders around this time. That said, you know, profits are very low. And so carriers can afford to take their their trucks offline like they normally would around this time to spend more time with their families. So something to consider um, as you continue through the, the rest of the year when you see a truck driver on the road. That said, Mays, um, one call out that I wanted to bring up, we haven't spoken about this in the last two weeks, but I think it's worth noting. Where do reefer tender rejections currently sit? Is there any volatility that we should be talking about there? That's a great call, Jenny. Over the past two weeks, we were mentioning reefer rejections and the pressure we're seeing on the reefer freight market. 
I do believe that we're going to start seeing that also start declining over the next two weeks, but it's going to be at a slower pace than the dry van market. All right. Well, obviously, the next two weeks are quite critical as it relates to both shippers, but specifically carriers. So, Maze, if you could place some big bets for the rest of the year, what do you think they're going to be for um, the upcoming weeks that we should be looking forward to or maybe not looking forward to? Well, Jenny, if I had to take a bet on what's going to take place over the next two weeks, it's going to be certainly the average rate declining. But more specifically, we're going to see greater declines in the southeast and south as those regions go back to where they were prior to the Thanksgiving week. We may still continue to see some pressure in the Midwest and Northeast, especially as snow starts to fall. Well, as you mentioned it, uh, upstate New York has already started to see its first snowfall. I I took a drive out there to Trader Joe's this weekend, and I was surprised that there was a blanket of snow out there. It was very pretty. That's right, Jenny. The fun fact this week is cities in New York actually experienced the most snowfall in the United States. Those cities are Syracuse, Buffalo, and Rochester because of the lake effect snow that takes place. Now, Jenny, I will say carriers and shippers need to continue to keep an eye on these areas, but it's nothing new as this has always been a problem for transportation in different areas in the Midwest and Northeast. But as you called out, we're already starting to experience some snow this week up to two feet in some parts of New York and even Cleveland, Ohio. So it's something to keep an eye on that may start driving rates upward in the greater Northeast and other parts of the Midwest. All right, well, we gave you a lot to look forward to up top. You know what it's time for, the regional breakdown. And I think that we should get started in the Pacific Northwest. What's happening there? We've been talking about it for almost two months now and how tight it's been where rates have really been driven upward. I did mention about two weeks ago that we were starting to see some declining, but then last week we saw added pressure. Now, over the next week, I think we're going to continue to see some pressure with rates increasing in states like Oregon, Idaho, and Washington. But after the next week, we're going to start seeing rates decline. I mean, we're almost just a few weeks away from Christmas. Christmas trees will not be moving out of there at such high volumes. We're starting to shift away from produce season in the Pacific Northwest. So overall, Right now, we're going to still experience some tightness, but it's going to be followed by loosening like the majority of the U.S. in the coming two and a half weeks. And what about the West Coast? What are some updates that you've got to note there? We only saw a slight incline in the average rate from last Monday to today. And I think it's important to call out for freight leaving the West Coast, the greater the length of haul, the greater increase we saw in average rates. All right. And what's going down in the Midwest? Overall, the Midwest, again, saw something very similar to the West Coast with a slight increase just under 1% from last week to today. Now, looking at the Midwest, I want to call out the Chicago and Juliet market because those two markets, which are the highest volume markets in the Midwest, saw the greatest increase. And speaking of the Midwest maze, it looks like Chicago is actually going to be seeing a snowstorm this week, only predicted to be about two inches, whereas in January, fun fact, their typical uh, or average snowfall is around 21 inches, which is quite a lot. Exactly, Jenny. We've got to continue to keep an eye, like we called out, on weather because there is some weather going to be hitting areas like Ohio that could have that domino effect of capacity, but I think it's a little too early and it's not going to be just enough snow to be calling out any issues just yet. But as we go farther into the winter months, expect the Midwest to continue to be somewhat stubborn with some markets seeing increases week over week while others seeing decreases. Moving on over to the Northeast, what's happening there? We saw slim increase just like the West and Midwest on the average rate leaving the region. Now I want to call out New York because of the snow. We are already starting to experience increases in the average rate in just about every market picking up in the New York state. And we're going to see this expand this week. This is going to be for the entire New England region. As the weather gets colder, the market usually starts to heat up. But when you look at the state of Pennsylvania, the largest market up in the Northeast by volume being Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, we haven't seen too much tightening. And we actually saw rates decrease from last Monday to this Monday. But the same story isn't said for Allentown, Pennsylvania and Elizabeth, New Jersey, where rates did increase. If I was a betting man, Jenny, I would say that next week when we're talking, we're going to continue to experience some pressure in the Northeast as a whole. 
and Harrisburg's actually gonna start seeing some tightening as capacity issues in North Jersey and Allentown, Pennsylvania starts to spread a little bit more west to the Harrisburg market. So again, if I was a betting man, I would say the Northeast region will be the region that next week we touch on experiencing an increase from today. Well, you know, I will hold you to those bets and we'll figure it out next week. But right now, why don't we talk about what's happening in the coastal region? This is one of the regions that I called out in the very beginning that saw increases greater than the Midwest, Northeast or West Coast. Now the average increase wasn't super significant, but it was very noticeable in the Carolinas especially South Carolina. So this is something to keep an eye on going into next week because I bet you, Jenny, we're gonna see declines in the coastal region overall, especially in North and South Carolina, which saw the pressure over the past week. Now we're gonna move on over to Maze's side of the hood. It is the Southeast. Maze, what's the weather like over there? Because I hear that it's actually colder there than it is in New York. <laughs> now here in Atlanta, it's not warm, it's freezing cold. But down in Florida, the markets have actually heated up. I want to call out, Jenny, that the Southeast as a whole saw a pretty noticeable shift upward in the average rate in every length of haul. And it was most noticeable in Miami, Florida and in Atlanta, Georgia. And those are two of the higher volume, if not highest volume markets in the Southeast. The only markets that did not experience an increase week over week in the average rate is in the state of Alabama. Other than that, Georgia, Florida, and Tennessee, every market in those states experienced week over week increases in rates. Now, Jenny, if I was a betting man, I would double down on the fact that the Southeast, we see the most significant declines than any other regions when we're talking again next week on the regional breakdown. Maze, I cannot keep up with you this week. There are so many bets that we'll have to review next week. We'll need another show, but that's not a bad idea. That said, why don't we wrap up the regional breakdown and talk about the South? The South also just like every other region, saw a decrease week over week. But more notably, the highest volume markets, Dallas and Fort Worth, followed by Houston, saw increases, where more lower volume markets, such as Amarillo, Austin, Texas, Laredo, Texas, McAllen, Texas, all saw decreases. As we go into next week, we're gonna start seeing the South decline, but not as much as what we're gonna experience in the Southeast and Coastal, but we will certainly see the higher volume markets that experienced the larger increase over the last week start showing that decline as an influx capacity drives down the average rate for freight leaving the south. Now, as we called out about a month ago, freight picking up in the south, southeast, and coastal headed up to the northeast and midwest was the most ideal freight. And this is where carriers are going to get paid less heading to better markets. And Jenny, this is going to be said again for the following two and a half weeks. It's all about your lane you're running. Now, if you're leaving these less ideal regions and markets headed to more ideal, where there's more volatility and rate pressure, like the Midwest and Northeast, you're going to get paid less leaving those regions and return getting paid higher coming back to those regions from those higher volatility markets where pressure is traditionally seen in the winter months. All right, a lot of great insights this week, Maze. As usual, we will definitely have a lot to touch base on next week as we get closer to Christmas. That said, we will see you next week with an all-new episode of the Transfix Take Podcast. And Maze, did you want to close us out on something? And again, Jenny, I want to thank all the drivers out there that were hauling through the holiday, all the warehouse workers working at all the shippers and receivers. And again, Jenny, thank you. Thank you, Maze, as always. And remember, drive safely. All views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of Transfix Inc. or any parent companies or affiliates or the companies with which the participants are affiliated and may have been previously disseminated by them. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are based upon information considered reliable, but neither Transfix Inc. nor its affiliates nor the companies with which the participants are affiliated warrant its completeness or accuracy and it should not be relied upon as such. All views and opinions are subject to change. Ah!